Hey guys, so I've been talking about this pull behind spreader for some time now, and I finally had a chance to use it. I've had a chance to calibrate it. I'll go over a bunch of different stuff with you today, so hold on one sec. Hey guys, I'm gonna link to this unit below in the description, I'll put it on a page. And on that page, I'll also put any of the products I'm talking about, spray products, whatever. But I was kind of, a lot of people I think are often curious about the size. And I did a lot of research and I think that this is a really good size for just about anybody, whether you have a medium sized lawn or a large lawn, or you've got two acres. But one thing we're gonna be doing this year is we're gonna be putting down, once the summer temps come in, once we start to get into those 80s and 90s we're going to be putting down clean organic matter you know some of this chicken feed or soybean and then we're going to be spraying it with um sort of a probiotic mix and micro microbial mix we're going to be spraying that to really get the energy going that'll eliminate all your thatch worries it'll actually just boost up your soil it's going to be fantastic I wanted this not only for my herbicides, but I also wanted it for that summer long treatment. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over some of the features with you today and uh, talk about it. Number one, I like this thing simply because it's, it's really lightweight. I mean, it's real easy to move. It comes with pneumatic air-filled tires. Um, the assembly on it is not that hard. Actually, my son put it together. It has sprayer arms. So these sprayer arms actually fold out and then you put the pin in and you do that on both sides. So you have your sprayer arms. Then it also has shut off valves for each individual sprayer. You can change the direction of these to spray out. Now, the testing we did, I mean, it was big. This was about an 11, almost, it was at least 10 feet wide the pattern that I was getting with this. Uh, it comes with a really high end pump on it. It comes with a pressure gauge on it. I was running only 20 PSI basically through this thing on a lower pressure and it was spraying great. One of the reasons why it has these shut off valves on it is you can shut out these valves off and then, let's see if I got any pressure in there, and then it has a long cord on it that you can actually spray. So this is really good for edging or for areas that you don't want anything to get into or your tight areas. So you can spray while you're on there. Um, you turn it on and run. Now let me show you the switch. It comes with a standard uh, on off switch and this runs right by you and you just turn it on, just click it on and off, click it on and off. The tank actually unscrews right here. It's nice and wide. It actually has um, a filter screen on the suction tube in there. Plus it has a constant sort of um, pressure relief spray that goes into it. So what ends up happening as it's jostling, you have another stream that's shooting inside here to keep that tank mixed. It's actually a pretty, pretty good system. I did a modification on this. I'll show you that in a second. Standard, uh, you know, lawnmower hitch on it. It comes with alligator clamps on this, on this end part. So what I did was I cut off these alligator clamps and I ordered a, uh, I ordered a two pin automotive plug, which is what it uses. And let me tell you what I did. I installed permanently on my John Deere, um, right into the battery terminals, one of these. I'll show that to you here in a second. So now I just plug it in. I don't have to worry about these things popping off as I'm bouncing around. The other thing is if you wanna, if you wanna take this somewhere like behind a fence or something and clean it out, um, you don't have power to wash out your hoses. So <laughs> I got smart and I ordered another one of these two pins and I put my clamps that I cut off on this. So what I did was I actually have a small 12 volt like go-kart battery and I can take that with me and I can actually hook that up and I can go somewhere and I can clean this out and the motor can run without having to be hooked up to my lawnmower. Does that make sense? 
because I don't want to drive my lawnmower behind my fence back there to, to wash this thing out. When you are putting together this end of it, where it connects to your mower, just make sure you measure how high up your switch is from the ground. Um, we had to put it all the way down and then I actually kind of bent my connectors together so that it would actually drop down a bit and now mine runs perfectly level. So let me tell you how we calibrated this thing. I ran it, like I said, I kept it at about 20 PSI. I filled it up to 10 gallons. After I filled it to 10 gallons, I added like a teaspoon of green dye to it just so I could see the water line. And then I marked out an area that was exactly 3,000 square feet on my front lawn. I went out, I drove around, and I sprayed, and I sprayed that exact 3,000 square feet going at a certain um, mile per hour. And what ended up happening was is I ended up using just over three gallons to cover that exact 3,000 square feet. So that tells me that if you go at a nice slow pace with your mower, set it at about 20 PSI, that this thing will cover probably 26,000, 27,000 square feet, which is nice. So I only had to fill it up. Like if I want to do my lawn, um, let's say I've got like, I want to spray 18,000 square feet. I'd fill it up to about 18 gallons. The nice thing about getting the larger one is I don't have to fill it all the way up to the top. I wouldn't get the smaller one. I would get the 30 gallon one and I'll put a link to it down below because that way the, the liquid inside, I only have to fill it up halfway and, and it gives it room to slosh around. And I just think you should buy larger than you need. <laughs> so. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing old Hank. It ain't that long till I'm back at the farm. I'm pulling up the truck down at the dock. It's time to do some cruising, baby. Get a little stuck. It's a Saturday joy ride. First and feast is the spot. Alright, so one little tip I noticed when I'm using this is I have a tendency to get like little pieces of grass inside the tank. I don't know if it's from the hose or whatever. So before you use it and start filling it, take off the cap, take off the drain cap and tilt it up like I have it here and then rinse it out and get all that crap out of the tank. That's step number one before you start filling it. Starting to get a little warm out here today. So, as an example, my backyard, the actual grass is probably about eight to eight thousand, just over eight thousand square feet. So, I'm going to fill this up close to ten gallons. Then I'm going to add my chemicals to it, and then I'm going to use the hose to stir it inside. If I add my chemicals first to this, a lot of times especially like with the green dye and whatever you're using, it'll foam up a whole bunch. So I like to add water, then add some more, uh, more water to it after the chemicals. Okay, so here's one little tip. Um, yes. I'm done spraying so I can get rid of that. <clears throat> when you go to clean this thing out, 
um, I unhook it as you can see and I sort of latch it onto my trailer. I just tilt it back. Um, I actually have a containment zone right here. This is actually dug out with charcoal and sand so I can actually dump chemicals here. That's the one place on my property I can do this out front. So then I take my cap off. The problem is, is all your lines are still going to have some of that chemical in it. So you kind of need to put a little bit of water in, let it drain out, put the cap back on, and then flush this line, the spray lines, It's because it's going to backfill a little bit. Because there's actually, this right here is actually sort of an aeration, sort of like a live well pump. Water constantly shoots back into there. So you have to do this two or three times to really flush it out. So I'm just, we're on the last phase of that. Let me show you what it looks like. So I'm also gonna clear out this line too. And while this is still up, take your, um, your cap off just in case you have any grass or anything inside the tank and then it'll flow out and then she's ready to store. Just basically pull your pins and put it away. So a lot of people may say to you, Doc, you're putting out these treatments and it's uh, too cold. Let me give you a perfect example. <laughs> My son and I are trimming bushes back here and he just took off, he's in the t-shirt and shorts. It's 68 degrees today. Yesterday was sunny and in the 60s. So we got two days where it's really warm, no rain, and we're putting this and we've got our treatments down. So. The weeds are actually right now going, oh man, I can, I can grow a little bit. I can grow a little bit. And then in two days, we've got lots of rain coming in. Perfect. It's going to be pushed down into the soil. So that's why we're doing this now. I wouldn't do it during a week where it's 30 degrees high all day. But these days right here where it's warm, perfect time to put it down. Doc.